Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have Peter Myers. We'll see a reflection by Father Joseph and much more. Welcome to Life on the Rock. Tonight our guest is Peter Myers. He is a seminarian uh, with the Archdiocese of Baltimore. He's also a former Focus missionary, and I met up with him a couple of years ago at a Focus conference, and we talked about his journey of faith and his struggles. He's legally blind, and he's overcome some real challenges mm -hmm. in his life, so he's going to share that faith journey with us tonight. And it's also important where he's sharing it at, and that's the college environment. A lot of people lose their faith, you know, whenever they go to college. But it's important to really see a lot of the spark of faith, you know, and to be challenged in the faith and to grow in that holiness, but also that relationship with God. So we're now going to the garden with Father Joseph. We human beings are unique in that we're not pure spirits like the angels in heaven, nor are we simply beasts and animals that do not have an immortal soul. But we are this profound unity of the corporal and the spiritual. We have a body and we have a soul. We don't have two natures. We have one nature, the human nature. It's this profound unity of the corporal and the spiritual. And so we need to recognize that reality in ourselves. We don't despise our bodies as is sometimes talked about today, but we see our bodies as going to share in the glory of heaven. They're destined for glory, our entire human nature. And that they are to be temples of the Holy Spirit as well. So we need to both nourish our bodies and our souls. We need to strengthen them. And we need to have the sun shine. So for our souls, we know that reality, right? That we need spiritual nourishment if our souls are going to thrive. So we need prayer. We need good spiritual reading, programs on EWTN, and the Eucharist, which is the nourishment par excellence. And then we can think of also that our souls also need to be strengthened. And so temptation is an opportunity to strengthen virtue and to practice discipline. And that enables us to flourish. And then to also look upon the Son, S-O-N, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. But also then our bodies too, that we are to honor them and to assist them to flourish too with good nourishment. That's why I like to garden. And we're seeing the garden where I often work here when I have the opportunity. Because a garden enables you to have good nourishment. The vegetables, when they're, they're most pristine with all the enzymes and phytonutrients and all of the things that are there when they're freshly picked. Also gardening enables you to exercise, shoveling, and getting out in the fresh air. And we're most happy, we're most mentally uh, acute when we're physically active. And then we're also enjoying the sunshine because vitamin D, right, comes from the sun. So I'd like you to think today about that profound unity that we are as human beings of the corporal, the spiritual, body and soul to nourish and strengthen both of those elements and to look upon the Son, Jesus Christ. Welcome, Peter Meyer, to Life on the Rock. Thank you, Father. It's good to be here. Now, you've been a focused missionary for two years. And now you're studying for the priesthood. Mm -hmm. So you're in philosophy. You got to take two years philosophy, then mm -hmm. four years of theology. Yep. And uh, I was hoping you could tell us about your experiences as a missionary, then in discernment. Um, to me, you sound like you had a really exciting assignment as a missionary. Where were you assigned? Yeah. So I spent the last two years at uh, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Boston. Yeah. Um, it was a very challenging experience being there. The students are very driven in general. They're a lot of them are engineering and math students and things like that and so they tend to be the type of people who just when they want to do something they do it full on mm -hmm. um, and so that was good for the Catholic community in so far that 
the students who were interested in being Catholic really wanted to pursue that and really wanted to live that out. Um, but at the same time, that meant that you know students who weren't interested in that, it was hard to get a hold of them. And then also, more importantly, even the students who wanted to be Catholic, they didn't really understand very well what it meant to have a relationship with God and have a relationship with people right. because they're so focused on their academics and on their school and their other yeah, activities yeah. that it's hard for them to understand how to have a relationship with people and then with God. Yeah. So that was kind of the thing that I as a missionary did mostly in my two years there was really just offering them an example through my witness to them and an opportunity to help them learn how to, to really build yeah. friendships with people, to build authentic friendships. Yeah that are meaningful and to listen to people and to hear what they have to say and to, to be open to them and to love them. Yeah. And MIT, of course, is you know, one of the top engineering schools with incredible history of achievement and things. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I went to engineering school, studied engineering, and I mean, it can be a tough group just to have faith in that. Um, talk about that aspect. Did you get many converts or? Did you was that a thriving student center? Or? Yeah, yeah, we actually did have, um, we had a few students convert while I was there, which, you know, for the size of MIT and the size of the population, it was actually pretty good to see, you know, even just three or four students in a year coming to the church. One of the most amazing stories for me was there was a student there who um, had grown up Protestant, and then when she had gotten to MIT, she'd kind of fallen away from her faith in general, uh -huh. um, and then she, had, she was kind of a radical feminist in a lot of ways, and then she, decided to convert to Judaism of all things. Um, and so she was in that process when we as the missionaries encountered her um, and she was still kind of just searching and trying to figure things out and fighting for whatever, you know, feminist, but also some kind of religion. Um, and we encountered her and one of my teammates um, just really walked with her through this experience and just yeah. got to know her and invited her to participate in Bible study. Um, and this girl, Haley, she was involved in Bible study for a year and she was, you know, she was still converting to Judaism, but she was just interested and just wanted to find out. Yeah. And eventually, at the end of that year, they were in a Bible study about, and they were talking about Jesus Christ. And um, at the end of the Bible study, this girl just talked to my teammate, and she was like, "Like, if Jesus is real, like, I have to become Catholic." Mm. And she really, she discerned it a little bit more, and she became Catholic. Um, just like one of the most strong practicing Catholics I've ever ever seen, and she's actually kind of joined together like an idea of feminism that can go along with the Catholic Church, of following the church's teachings while, you know, promoting ways mm -hmm. that, that women can still be, um, you know, can be strong and loving, but right. in, the, in the means of the church. And, right. um, and she right. just got married just recently to another convert yeah. who also converted at MIT, also through the Catholic community there. So um, it's been a really amazing experience to see the conversions that have happened there. Yeah, like the engineering world is very kind of linear. You got to be able to, if it's real, you got to be able to test it, experiment on it. Mm -hmm. So calling them the faith can be challenging. What, what was kind of effective? Was it like proofs of the existence of God or miracles or was that effective? Or? Yeah, I mean, I think it really depended on the student in a lot of cases. Yeah. Um, so for Jacob, who was the student who converted, he mostly, it was through reading the church fathers and talking to people about the proofs for the existence yeah. of God and learning about the history and just so many people who were representing to him like this is clearly true from all the people in the history who have said that it's true you know he kind of came to this realization as that kind of linear way of yeah. looking at things that like if there's this many reasons for people saying this the probability is it's probably true and right. so he converted through that and then in a similar that, way. That's what I want to tell Bill Mara. It's like, yeah, yeah. Ninety something percent of the world believes in the gods. You know, there's got to be something exactly. to it. Exactly. You know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it must be exciting too to turn these really intelligent people, driven people, when they do catch fire, how far they run with the ball. You absolutely. Know? <laughs> you know? That was one of the joys of being there for me was just yeah. seeing how the students, the moment that they really got it, that yeah. it clicked for them. They would just they were going to daily mass every day they were a lot of them were praying a holy hour every day and these are college students and so like it's amazing to see the effort that they're putting in and most importantly at an engineering school like that yeah. people have so many questions and their friends are asking things these students wanted to know how they could defend the faith and yeah. how they could represent it to their, their fellow yeah. students and how they could evangelize their their friends yeah. through living that out and through talking yeah. to them and proving it to them yeah 
Yeah, I still remember, yeah, conversations I would have in college, you know, those are so powerful. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so if you get one of them to to be a mission, a mission to their own, that's real effective. Yeah, yeah exactly. Now, the other part you shared, you were saying how, how you're trying to cultivate in them a real uh, like relationships and how to build friendships. What was effective in that? Yeah, I mean, that was that was definitely a challenge to help them understand that. And I think the most effective thing ended up just being representing it to them and showing it to them. So myself and my uh, the other male missionaries mm -hmm. who were there, we would for the guys in particular, we would we would really try to show a united front of us as friends. Mm -hmm. um, and then we would reach out to them. And one of the biggest things we found was just spending time with them doing things that they cared about mm -hmm. and showing them that even if maybe this isn't something I'm that interested in, yeah. but I know you like doing that. Right. And so I'll do that with you yeah. because that was kind of one of the struggles that we saw was a lot of them, if it wasn't something that was interesting to them, they weren't yeah. really that interested in being involved in it. And yeah. so, you yeah. know, it was hard to kind of, if guys didn't have mo like similar interests, it was hard for them to be friends. And so we tried yeah. to model that of just, you know, being with the person for the sake of that person, that seeing yeah. that person as another Christ, yeah. rather than seeing them as utility of how can I do something with them. Yeah. Well, personally, did you have trouble like tapping into that world of computers or video games or, <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah, it's, it's true that I, yeah. I, you know, I was an accounting major in college, yeah. but I wasn't really into engineering stuff. Yeah. I wasn't into yeah. a lot of those yeah. kind of nerdy yeah. computer I was yeah. nerd in a different way but not yeah. in that way yeah. um, and so it was kind of challenging for me to yeah. to be involved in that but I kind of going into it I realized that the most important thing for me was to be myself and to just own the fact that I wasn't always that into that thing yeah. but to share with them my interests that I yeah. like and to show them that they could do that with others too yeah. because that was another thing a lot of them were afraid to do sometimes is to share what they were actually interested in yeah. and so to show that like share what you're interested in and share in what someone else is interested in and that's a really good way to build a friendship yeah now you have another great challenge you're legally blind yes and you generously were following the lord wanting to further his kingdom mm -hmm. how did god use that cross or challenge in your life yeah i mean i think it's been the most evident i think has just been through my experience with focus and then starting seminary the last few years of um, it was really in focus, in my time in focus, when I encountered the realization that I had never dealt with the grief of losing my vision when I was nine, um, that I had never really dealt with that experience and how hard that was as a child that I experienced that. Um, and so I realized through that experience, um, I encountered God in adoration in front of the Blessed Sacrament, in front of the Eucharist, and just had this profound experience of feeling God's love for me. And knowing that God was saying, through all this hard stuff, I've been there, and that your life is the gift, ultimately, that I've given you, and I want you to give that gift back to me, is what I heard um, in prayer. And so I really felt this calling to, to just give my life to God in the most radical way that I can. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the two yeah. years as a missionary kind of led to me realizing that the most radical way that I felt that I could give my life to God is as a priest. And were you touched by missionaries yourself? And, yeah. yeah. Um, so when I, I was at, um, I did undergrad at Towson University in Maryland. Um, and my senior year there, there were focused missionaries who came in. It was their first year there. And I was the president of the Catholic campus ministry that year. And so we kind of worked hand in hand with helping them get started um, on our campus. And I just, I was already becoming on fire for my faith at that point. And the missionaries wow. really kind of um, just brought that to a full um, to fruition or whatever yeah. um, and so it brought it to a point where I went on a mission trip my scene my last year mm -hmm. there with the missionaries and that experience was ultimately what really opened my heart and my my mind fully to being a missionary myself because um, yeah. the missionaries had invited me to do it and I'd been kind of hesitant um, and then I went on a mission trip to Nicaragua and just seeing the experience of that just really brought me closer to God and gave me the opportunity to say yes to being a missionary for a couple of years. And how did, you, how did you grieve the loss of your sight? What was key for you in that? I mean, ultimately, what I, what I experienced was I went to spiritual direction as a missionary, and I realized that I hadn't been being real with God in prayer. Um, that when I prayed, it was more of, this is what I think God wants me to say to Him. This is how I feel like I should be talking to God. Yeah. And I learned from that experience that the best thing to do was to just say what was on my heart and what was on my mind. And so... I was able that summer really to just 
kind of open the floodgates and you know I was angry with God at times and I was really sad with God at times and I was like how could you let this happen mm -hmm. um, but ultimately that was a really healing experience in a lot of ways and I think there's still some healing to be done but ultimately yeah. it opened my heart more and more to to God and to realizing that like to really have a true relationship with God I have to be open with him in the same way that I'm open with friends or family or other people. And that happened in the Adoration Chapel? Largely. Absolutely, yeah. It happened yeah. in front of the Blessed Sacrament in the Eucharist, for sure. Immaculate Conception Church? Yeah, in Towson, Maryland. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've mm -hmm. been to that, that church. Now yeah. you, talk about the discernment to the priesthood. How did you feel that call? And what did what was that experience? Yeah, like? I mean, I felt it originally a little bit as a kid, um, serving at Mass, and then I never really thought about it again until I was in college. Um, when I was at Towson University, a couple of other guys and I from the Catholic ministry got to know the vocations director who was living in Towson at the time. Um, and so he just, he would have these weekly early morning masses once a week and we would go and we would just talk to him about theology or philosophy or whatever it was. And these three guys and I and the vocations director, um, through doing those meals and then through those other two men challenging each other, the three of us were challenging each other to pray every day, to go to mass every day. Um, and so it grew my faith a lot more and it got to the point where by my senior year of college I was interested in going to seminary potentially but my heart wasn't in the place yet to be open to giving my life to God in that way yeah. and so then it became that thing where when I was a missionary and I really opened my heart to God um, through that healing experience it gave me the opportunity at that point to really feel open enough with God to say I trust you and I'll say yes to this as scary as it is in a lot of ways to say yes to this calling and to go to seminary at least and, and find out. Yeah. So your first year, pre-theology, how's it going? <laughs> it's been a good experience. It's been intense, obviously, with you know things that have happened in the church the last few months. The Pennsylvania report hit a week before we started seminary, and so the first yeah. couple weeks were all about that, and there was yeah. a lot of you know just stress and things with that, with all the new seminarians and everything. But um, and obviously, it's been a big transition to just I mean, even as a missionary. Um, that helped with kind of being in a similar lifestyle in some ways to yeah. being a priest. Um, but even just not being active now as a seminarian instead I've kind of gone from the active ministry role of a missionary yeah. to being kind of in a more contemplative Academic, idea of yeah. kind of, yeah, mm -hmm. of learning more and, and going back to academics has yeah. been interesting yeah. after a couple of years yeah. off and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and it's been a little bit of a challenge with my vision being yeah. legally blind and having to do a lot of reading for seminary, having to find ways to get audio books or do little bits of reading here or have yeah. other seminarians read to me or things yeah. like that but yeah. so far it's been a good experience yeah all right peter thank you so much for talking with thanks us thanks a lot father it's been a great opportunity thank you. well i really enjoyed that interview mm -hmm. with uh, peter myers that you know, he's at MIT. You're right. <laughs> he's a focus mission. I would think that'd be kind of intimidating. Oh, MIT, yeah. of course, is maybe the top engineering school, one of the top science schools in the country. You're dealing with a very driven, intelligent yeah. group of people that are very much focused on science and factual evidence, yeah. you know. They but, want answers. <laughs> yeah, want answers. And he just talked about accompanying them, being friends with them, kind of help, you know, being with them in their life mm -hmm. and accompany them in, in their interests and things and certainly prayer. And I thought it was beautiful that he, you know, he had some yeah. people that really converted more deeply to the Lord. I think putting that emphasis on a relationship is really important these days because I think that's really fractured yeah. in our society, uh, especially in the family, uh, but also in college. You can find a lot of lonely people just in college. Uh, and a lot of times what he said, you know, you're caught up in your work, you're caught up in your studies. And a lot of times you're, you're working against the clock a lot of times yeah, with your yeah. school. And sometimes it's like, well, does anybody pay attention to me or anything like that? But, you know, I think one of the profound truths is that, you know, God did create us. God does love us. You know, and he loves us into existence, you know, and he calls us back to himself. You know, and that's something, there's a remarkable communion that God wants to establish with us. But we just have to be open, you yeah. know, and God's grace will pour through our lives. And we see that really with Peter. Yeah, and, and he had great struggles, mm -hmm. uh, legally blind. Um, I, I was really moved by what he said, that in prayer, the Lord told him, you know, because he had to grieve the loss mm -hmm. of his sight, yeah. you know, in prayer and things. And at one point, God said, I was with you in all those struggles. And the great gift I've given you is, 
your life. Yeah. You know, our existence, our life, the possibility of communion with God. And I want you to give that life back to me. I want yeah. you to be dedicated to me. And so he became a priest. You know, it's yeah. an incredible yeah. story. But I, I think it's great wisdom for all of us in our trials and difficulties that God is with us and he's given this great gift of life, that life made in his image and destined to be with him for all eternity. You know, to have the beatific vision, the experience, the joy, the love, the communion mm -hmm. of heaven with God himself. That's an incredible gift yeah. that we can never repay. Yeah. You know, the only thing we can give back is love. That's the only gift we can return for the great love that God has for us in creating us and dedicate our lives to him in some way to seek his will, whatever that path is in your life. So we send you into that vineyard with a blessing and just to reflect on Peter's witness tonight, I hope that it'll inspire you in your faith. May our Heavenly Father shine his face upon you. May he give you his peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock. I was 18, pretty in pink and the prom queen. I didn't think I'd be sorry when I gave him my love. Raw emotions, for weeks I was late telling no one, crying and pain I was broken when they told me it was done no words to say the way I feel mother and child never seen but real pain I cold feet the room where we were no one holds me you were a girl someone told me as I stared at the wall